We have done a survey with hundreds of people asking them why they would procrastinate. And it turns out the number one reason is distractions. Number two is the feeling of overwhelm and overload. Number three is negative inner voices. And then in addition, we also found people being exhausted and tired, people being lazy and in their comfort zone, and also people being bored and also having the feeling of isolation. That was the main reasons why people procrastinate. So the way humans make decisions, we have a system one, that is a fast automatic subconscious system, and we have a system two, that's the slow, reflexive, very conscious decision making. We are all aware of this, pros and cons, but interesting enough, system one, we do most of our decisions, actually 70 to 80%. Now nudging is a way to hack into that system one. For example, in the meeting context, when you double click, you want to make a new meeting in Microsoft Outlook, the default will be 60 minutes, and most people will end up doing their meetings in 60 minutes. If you change that default, and you can ask IT to change it to 45, 40, or 30, your meetings will be shorter. So this is how defaults affect your behavior. It could be the physical environment we are in, but also the social or emotional environment we are in. And there are certain signals that either support or hinder certain behavior. Same again in the meeting context. Uh, if teams see how time is passing by by looking at a clock or looking at a countdown, they will have the signal of having more time discipline. While at the same time a casino, you will not see a clock at all because they're not interested in you being aware of how time is passing by. If we use the, the concept of signaling, for example, I could put my sport clothes in my sleeping room in the way that I, when I wake up in the morning, I see it and it signals to me, hey, here I am, let's do something, right? Or I can even put it on the door so that I really have to even move it away to do this. So that will be signaling. That's one option. I was actually doing it with somebody and she said, um, yeah, it works, but I need something even stronger. <laughs> And I said, okay, let's use the power of default. And believe it or not, we said, what can we do? And we ended up saying, put your running clothes on in the evening and sleep with your running clothes on so that when you wake up, your default is you have your running clothes on. And they may be dirty anyway, you have to wash them. Since you have them on anyway, why don't you just go for a run? And that actually worked even for the most busy person to go running two, three times a week. We have in positive psychology 24 character strengths. You can make a test, you can analyze them to have your own ranking in order of your 24 strengths and that is a good starting point. However, the signature strength is a subset of those 24 strengths. So humans have between three and eight signature strengths and those strengths are so inherent in you that you almost cannot avoid using them. For example, I had COVID at some point and I was completely down physically, emotionally. And my sister would call me and say, you have always such good ideas. I needed an idea for, the, for a present to a friend. And even though it was, I was in my worst situation, I would still come up with ideas because creativity is among my signature strengths. So if your signature strength is social intelligence, Maybe you make sports with somebody else because you can, you can connect with each other. Or if your signature strength is curiosity, maybe you can go running and listen to a certain audiobook at the same time or watch a documentary if you like go running from home. So connecting something you're naturally good at with something you want to do makes it also more likely for you to actually do it. So chronobiology is basically looking into how is our energy unfolding throughout the day. Unfortunately, we have a wrong discussion in society, people asking, are you a morning type or are you an evening type? In fact, from chronobiology, we know chronotypes, and there is five different chronotypes. We have the intense morning type, 
the moderate morning type, the moderate evening and the intense evening type, and we even have an indifferent type in between. So it's less of are you in morning or an evening type, and it's more understanding which of the five chronotypes am I to better understand how my energy is unfolding throughout the day. Prime time is the time of the day when you have your highest energy. And it's just the physical energy, you are active and fit, but also your mental energy, you can, you're more flexible in your head and you can better deal with complexity. And also your emotional energy, which means you have more patience with yourself, <laughs> with others, and maybe the task at hand. And you also have more willpower, which means having more willpower, you would even do the things you really don't like. And every one of us has this prime time. It's two to three hours every day. But depending on which chronotype you are, some have it in the early morning, some in the late morning, some in the evening, and some even in the afternoon. But it's very important to understand when it is and then use that time and even protect it to work on those things that you really, really want to work on. So what's interesting about the concept of inner voices, we know from neuroscience that all the inner voices we have used to be external voices. Given to us a lot in our childhood, so maybe parents, grandparents, even educators like teachers or even professors, oftentimes even before we could speak. So it's almost like our inner script. Sometimes even advertising campaigns or famous quotes from certain athletes or other popular people become our inner voices. So all the inner voices we carry used to be ex and external voices. <laughs> One thing I would really recommend is observe the inner voices that are happening when you want to do this and you may end up not doing it. So really understand what are these inner voices saying and then finding a way to lower those negative voices and higher those positive voices. And sometimes it's only about that inner conversation, but sometimes also people say, I open the window and get in some fresh air or I shout something or I dance to a certain song where that negative voice comes or I talk to somebody. And we can learn from professional athletes that they have an inner voice that they call their inner mantra. So it's a something I was, I'm working with a professional, with an Olympic athlete, and she always tells to herself, she's a swimmer, she said, tells herself, if you have a lane, you have a chance. And she repeats this all the time. Because she also always thought, I'm not so good as the others, they practice more, they have more talent. But she keeps telling herself as an inner mantra, if you have a lane, you have a chance. The water is just as wet for everyone. And if you can find something like this to support your positive inner voices, cultivate this mantra, this will be supporting you also to make it more likely to actually make the sport or something else happen. Mm -hmm.